All right, my plan for this video is to set us up for drilling the holes here. Now, obviously, we've talked about edge finding. I had a different edge finding video, and you need to edge find so you know the exact corner. This print has the zero in the front left. That's where all the dimensions come from. Because of tolerances, I need to edge find and set my zero in the same place. So, I'm not going to go through the edge finding process because I've already done that in another video. You just need to know you need to do it. So, in the, when we weld on the end here, let me zoom in. When we worked on the end, we wanted the part deep enough into the vise, so it was a little bit above, but now if I'm going to try and edge find, I'm really close to where I smashed this down. If I hit this down here, you break, you mess up my edge find. So I'm going to one size smaller on the parallels. And that will allow, notice it's still grabbing by at least half the part and it gives me more room. And since I'm not putting any side forces on it, like end milling, it's not gonna see how the part's kind of tilting, it's wanting to pop it out. We're just going straight down by drilling a hole, okay? Now the other thing I need you to notice, and I'll stick them out a little bit so you can see these parallels. Can I, how is that? Yeah, it's a little bit better. So these parallels, if you look at the holes on the print, it looks like it's in the middle, but it's in the middle of what's left from the step. So if I look at my other view, there's this notch here that's cut out 200 thousandths. That means this distance is 300 thousandths. So the middle of that is 150. 150 plus 200 makes 350. There's my number. Why do I care? I care because my parallel isn't, is bigger than the side of the hole. If I leave the back parallel in, it's going to wreck my parallel. Again, free lecture. All right, so skip that. So what we will do is when we tighten up our part, we will take out that back parallel, and then we don't have to worry about it. As long as the part is tight, and is sitting down on the one parallel, we're good. So, the next thing. I'm going to slide this over here and hopefully we can see a little bit better without me trash in the neighborhood. Let's see. Woo there we go. On this side of the machine, right side, we have a stop so that I can slide my part in up against the stop. I mentioned this before, if I slide it up against the stop and I tighten my part, I drill a hole and I go, oh, did the hole go all the way through or whatever my thinking is. And usually students think like this, take it out and then look at it and then go, oh. So if I don't slide it against here, if I put it somewhere in the middle, I edge find, I edge find, I do a perfect job edge finding. I take my part out, I look at it, oh yeah, it's pretty, okay, it's good, put it back in. You're, you're not in the same spot, you gotta edge find again. You don't wanna do that. So if I put it up against the stop when I lock it down, now I can slide that back parallel out. From this side it's a little harder. Slide that back parallel out. Come on, focus. Oh, I know why. The handle well, made it think it was supposed to focus on that. So there, I took that back parallel out, put it down. Now I'm set to go. I have to edge find, but I've already done that and I'll show you. But I wanna do a quick reminder. Put this back here. Too bad I don't have a really nice, well, let me see. We'll do it like this for now. 
So, when we're drilling holes, we use a chuck. We do not use a collet. Those are for end mills. Use a chuck. Chuck already has, like a collet, on the back. It's an R8. It has the groove that we have to line up with the pin. It's all connected. It's an arbor, an R8 arbor. So I'm going to put it in here, find the groove, slide it up. I'm short, stand on my thing, tighten it all the way up by hand, righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's tight by hand, it won't fall out. Hold the brake, pull, pull, good and tight. Done. Tools in. So, I'm going to put the edge finder in. Do I use the chuck key? No. You'll crush it. It's hollow on the inside. So, hand tights it. Done. 1,000 RPM. 1,000 RPM. So, I am going to show you that I already have zero. This is my double check that I showed, or should have showed in the video, on edge finding, the very last part, and that is this. If I go to X0, Y0 on my digital readout, and I look, I can see that I'm on the center of the tool. So that's why. Now I come around here and I look in X. So just like I'm moving the camera is how you would look at your part. Oh, look at that, baby. It's right smack dab, halfway on, halfway off. Okay. Digital readout. Uh, it moved one thousandth because I've been messing around. I will make it, but it was zero, zero, and I will put it to the right numbers on the print. Don't you worry about that. So, get this back here. So, zoom back out a little bit, because I gotta remind you about some things. The quill, there's the quill, comes out, my quill stop. I wanna make sure that it is deeper than I need to drill a hole. But here's my drill, which is longer, so I need to make sure I don't want to clamp on the flutes. And I must use the chuck key. I do it on one side, then I turn it, because there's three holes on here, and I do it again. It helps to make it a little bit more centered. All right, so that's done, and I'm over the corner. So I look at my print. My print says to go X200, so I'm going to go over here to X200. Tap, 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 tap. Come on, baby. 200, exactly. Now, X-axis has locks in the front, so you turn these locks. Finger pressure to lock them, just like we lock the quill lock. If you try to move the machine and it's hard to move it, it's locked. Anytime we drill holes, we want to lock it so we can't accidentally bump it and drill a hole in the wrong place. Drill a hole in the wrong place, throw the part away, start all over. All right, why? 350. Going to 350. The good news is it's always positive numbers. If you remember the coordinate system, so 350, same thing, drawing it close, 30, 40, same, go baby, tap, 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 50, lock the Y, oh, see what happened, it jumped on me a half a thousandth, five ten thousandths of an inch, so loosen it up, move, tap back the other way, I'm going to move away so I can come to it better. Sometimes if you stay a half a thousandth away and then lock it, it depends on how old and how sloppy the machine is. I've seen machines where you have to stay two thousandths away because when you lock it, it moved. 
All right, 200 in X, 350 in Y. Do I set zero again here? No, because I'm reading the numbers off my print. Because I got to do this hole, and then I got to do this hole. Okay? So, I have made a could be fatal mistake on purpose. I don't want to drill with this really long drill first. This thing's flexible. Here, let me zoom in and show you how flexible. All right. I don't know why I make the sound like it makes noise. See, look at it. I can, I can flex this. Now, if I did it a lot, I would break it. My point is, there is a flat spot on the bottom of the drill. And so it's going to want to dance around, so to speak, when it's starting. And it might flex the drill, and then it might drill my hole off location. So they have a tool called a center drill. It's short. It's stubby. It's on two ends. So it has like a pilot, smaller drill. Then it has an angle where it goes up. And it creates a lead for my drill to follow. OK? So we send a drill first. Do the math calculations for this size tool, because that's the tool I'm going to use. 3.82. 100 surface speed divided by, what size is this? Oh, I looked at the print, and it told me I needed a 190 plus 5 minus 0. So I looked on my handy dandy wall chart, and I found at the bottom left of that chart, uh, let's see if I can point it out here somehow. Boop, boop. Uh, right there, 191. And the top of the other line is bigger. That's 189. So I chose a number 11 drill. Pick that out of my drill index. Number 11. So I do my math. And I'll set my speed. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to crank it up. So now, when I come all the way down, I'm too short. I can't make it because of my quill. See, I'm at the quill stop. Now, I got two choices. One, crank this down, which later I'm going to crank it back up. Or I can just say, you know what? I'm just going to raise the knee for a little bit for this one. Now, we don't drill holes by cranking the knee up. That, that's crazy and wrong. Okay, so raise it up, get close. Now I come down, uh, this is a little bit of drag, so I'm gonna pull out, hold the black disc, rotate a little bit. Now, woo, look at that. All right, so I don't plow into this thing. I'm like, touch, touch, zoom. Let's get a little bit closer zoom so you can actually see. So I'm going to just I'm gonna barely touch, touch, touch. I can start to see some dimples. Now, we have this stuff that's called coolant. It's in a little cup. It's a lubricant of oil and water mixture. It helps to keep the tool cool and keep the material from building up, so it also makes a little smoke because it's hot, it's hot. If it starts glowing orange, you're in trouble. Now, you want to go until it's just starting to build up on a little bit of an angle. Here is a perfect example for why you got to put it against the stop, because I'm going to take my part out so I can show you this little chamfer that it made. And if I didn't have this up against the stock when I took it out, I wouldn't, I'd have to edge find again. So, let's see if we can, okay. See, there's a little shiny on the angle there. That's a chamfer that's on an angle. That's going to help guide my drill when my drill comes in. Okay, so it's going to be able to go and follow that hole. Now, if I made this too big, it'd be like 
gigantic in, oh, it looked terrible. So, something else I'm gonna do that I recommend. I always got a Sharpie. If you got a Sharpie, it's a good thing. I am gonna put an X on the end that I put up against the stop. Now, the reason I do that is so, because if you look at the print, if I do the math, 1.5 long, 1.3 to the hole, that means the difference is 200 thousandths, 200 thousandths, so it's gonna look exactly the same. So how am I gonna know which way this thing was in there? I'm not. So I'm gonna, So I mark that, I may even make a little line up top, a little line up top, just, because we can mark this, we can take this off later, just so I know, hey, this is the top, and this is the end that goes against the stop. Now, since I took this part out, I might need to put my parallel back in to make sure that my part sits flat properly up against the stop, tighten it, take that back parallel out again. You guys shouldn't need to take out the part, okay? But um, if you do, that's what you're gonna have to do. So I'm kind of lazy. I don't wanna take this tool out, switch. So normally you're gonna take this center drill, then I'm gonna move over to the next make a center drill. I'm gonna move over to the next and make a center drill. But since this, we don't want this to be like uh, an extended feature film here um, where you need reclining seats, uh, I'm just gonna go as if this is the only hole that's getting made that size, okay? So I center drill it. I take the center drill out. And I gotta put my drill in. Oh, look at that, it doesn't fit. So I gotta lower my table. Now remember, when you lower the knee, cranking down the handle, you want to always, when you get to a point where you're okay, crank it back up one turn to set it in the up position to take that backlash out. I'm gonna put this in. Remember, we don't clamp on the flutes. Tighten up with the chuck key, tighten it here, turn it, tighten it again. Now I'm tight and even. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky. So as I drill, it is going to make a chip come up these flutes. The purpose of these flutes is to eject the chip. So if I go and pull down really long and slow, it's gonna make really long and windy chips. I'll try and show you that, okay? I have had it where, depending on like this handle here, let me go back out. This handle, I can take off and change its position to where it's more comfortable. Like if it ends up being all the way in the back, that's way too hard, okay? If it's way down here, I'm pushing like this so you want to find a position that's comfortable for you to be able to do this, okay? So I'm going to raise it up, got no drag. My part is a half inch. This is way more than a half inch, so I got plenty of room. So I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to use my coolant here. I'm going to move it down here so I don't knock it off and spill it, but I'm going to dip it, dip it, and you'll see it's a, it's, a, it's a drill wipe, drill wipe type scenario. So let me come in. So you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So the key is when I come up, I'm going to wipe the chips off and lubricate it. So I'm going to drill a little bit. Come up. If, if it's just squealing like this, there's no pressure. You're not cutting. You're just rubbing. All you're gonna do is make my drill go. You're gonna make the surface hard. It's called work hardening. 
then you'll get some glowing orange, then you'll get a drill break, and again, a free lecture. All right, so, make it work. Wipe, go in, wipe, wipe. Now, I saw some chips fly up. Sometimes you have to stop it and then try and get them off. But for the most part, it should be okay. Go in. Just got to make it work. Oh, there we go. I got a skinny one. Yeah, it's still on there. I can see it. Okay, it's a long skin. Don't take it off with your hands. See, I can see it up top here. Don't take it off with your hands. They're sharp. Okay. So little pecs, they call these pecs, are better. It gets easy when you go through. Bring it up, take it out. Done. That hole's done. Don't take your part out yet. Clean it off first. Okay. So. Uh, for the purpose of time, I'm going to say we're done. Yay, we ran out of time for today, or we're done, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to move this back because I want to do a quick refresher on taking the tool out. It's a little bit different with the end mill. You, the collet was in there and you tapped it and you had someone holding the end mill so it didn't bounce around on the floor breaking it. On a chuck. It's a little bit different and some people get messed up and so I want to talk to you about that so yeah see here Woo, missed me all right so this thing's got a chip right there okay there it is stringy sucker so little pex is better it's time to get up all right so let's take this out it's the reverse process, same as always. I always move it. Remember, you got to come all the way to the top. So I put it here, hold the brake, give it a jerk. Easy to turn. One, two. Now here's the part that's different. If I whack this, there's no tool that comes out. If you remember, this has an R8 Arbor on the back of it, so it's going to stay connected. So I'm going to whack it. I can't tell. Did it come out? How you can tell is if it wobbles. I'll show you what I mean. I grab it here. I can see it wobble. I can hear it. In fact, I could make it go up and down a little bit. But if it's wobbled, then it's loose. Don't keep beating on it. So now I'm just going to, I like to push up because it's easier, and I just unscrew, 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 unscrew. Oh, not yet. Oh, there we go. And now we are. Put it up in the rack. So, that is edge, we edge found, we center drilled, we drilled our hole. There's the hole. It goes all the way through like it's supposed to. Oh, turn it the wrong way. See, it goes all the way through. Okay, look at the back. There's burrs, so we're going to have to deburr it with a countersink. Okay, so the process would be do that one, then do that one, then a different tool to do the middle one. But it doesn't matter what size drill you're doing, the process is the same. And remember, always to clean up.